And here we go. Um, Nancy Stoltenberg will put a link in the chat box. And if you have questions, put the questions there. We will answer them uh, at the end of the session. But what we're gonna do today is do a whole brain teaching reset number one, Alpha Hawk to the rescue. The question is, what is an Alpha Hawk? So as I'm talking, you're making gestures because we want to see learning. So there are role models, someone who's good at basketball, someone who's good at business, someone who's good at science. And then there are other people who are just good at living. And what we mean by good at living means they live for others. So we have role models, which we never talk about, and alpha hawks, which we always talk about. And the key thing is they're nice, they're sweet, they're kind, but the definitional phrase that I want you to use in class is an alpha hawk lives for others. This gives us a moral compass, which our kids lack, which humans lack. The moral compass is follow the needle that points towards living for others and you're living well. Otherwise, you can get off on the wrong path. And I'll just say this. Personally, I'm not a fan of you have to love yourself before you can love anyone else. Personally, I'm not a fan of you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else. That may work, but it's not a teacher's philosophy. We're in the business of living for others. So we're putting living for others way up here. All right, a couple of steps. My friends, follow these steps. If you're not making kind of progress or if you're sliding backwards and I'm your tennis coach, then I would start you over with, here's how to hit a forehand. Let's just work on the forehand. Let's work on the forehand. So uh, Nancy will put the link in the chat box and I'm starting on slide 182. You might wanna note that slide 182. So the first thing, Aaron, unmute and give me a thanks, Coach B. Thanks, Coach B. Everybody, you're welcome. Aaron, step number one is for you to connect with your Alpha Hawk at least twice a day. When you come in in the morning, talk about your Alpha Hawk, one or more people who influenced you, who live for others, and say, I'm going to teach as if my alpha hawk was in this room and do my best to make him or her proud. That's step one, Aaron. Bring your alpha hawk into the room. It'll make you a better everything. Aaron, raise your hand and promise that you're going to follow step one from now to the last teaching day of your life. Give us a promise. Go, Aaron. Thank you, coach. I promise that every single day in the morning, I will think about my alpha hawk and teach as if she's standing right next to me. And make the promise. Say it out loud. I'm going to teach as if my alpha hawk was right here and invite kids to do the same thing. My friends huddle up. That means come a little closer. Two of my alpha hawks are Cesar Chavez and Mother Teresa. If I taught like Mother Teresa was standing there, I'd be at the top of my game. So this is something a beloved rascal cannot take away from you, Peg. They cannot take away from you the legacy of that person who shaped your life. You're in the business of following your calling. Don't worry about beloved rascals yet. Follow your calling. Peg, unmute. Give us the pledge. Coach, I'm here to follow my alpha hawk. Come on, Peg Pizano. I don't think we've ever talked. Go, girl. <laughs> no, we haven't talked. Um, coach, I am here to follow my alpha hawk. Doesn't that feel good? 
Yes. All right, good. Now, handily enough, after step one, this was slide 183, and get kids to talk about their alpha hawks. So bring the alpha hawk in the room. Step two, I'm super excited about. Nancy Stoltenberg, would you unmute? Wow, thank you, Coach. Nancy, listen. You go home. And the beloved rascals have been rolling all over the floor. That's not the point. The point is, did you teach in a way that would make your alpha hawk proud? That's the point. And you grade yourself. A, very proud. B, proud. C, mixed. D, disappointed. Or B, F, very disappointed. Grade yourself. That's all you got to do, Nancy. Make your alpha hawk proud. Explain the power of step two. Go, Nance. Uh, well, thanks, Coach. So it's been a rough day. There have been some challenges um, for different reasons, but you get home at the end of the day, different mindset. Focus on this question. What grade would you give, would your alpha hawk give you as a teacher today? Grade yourself, very proud, proud, mixed, disappointed, very disappointed. This is your new focus at the end of the day. Grade yourself in regards to your alpha hawk. All right, we've all finished today. Five means your alpha hawk would be very proud of how you did. Four is proud, three is mixed, Two is disappointed. One is very disappointed. I won't tell anybody, <laughs> except we're recording it. Oh, geez, no, we can't do that. All right. Uh, Blue, grade yourself. What grade would your alpha hawk give you today? Go ahead. All right. Thanks, coach. Um, I think my alpha hawk would give me a four. I think um, he would be pretty proud of how I taught today. All right. The deal with your alpha hawk is, did you control your tone of voice, Dawn? When you lose control of your tone of voice, your grade has got to go down. And Sarah DeBoer, I noticed you rolled your eyes to the heavens there when I talked about voice control. Come on, you're among friends, unmute. Talk about what happens when you lose control of your voice, girl. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Um, when you lose control of your voice, the whole class can tell and they just go down. Yeah. You lose the funtricity. Very good. Ten finger woo to that woman. Woo. All right. So step two, very simple. Grade yourself every day. I'm going to call on one more person. Ashley Evans, first grade, Georgia. Unmute, please. Give me a thank you, Coach B. Thank you, Coach. Ashley, listen. Did you ever notice that when a kid is out of control, the worst thing that you can be is out of control? You can't get a kid to regulate. Ashley, if you're unregulated, explain to your Brothers and sisters here, that fundamental truth that Doc Desatel has reiterated recently. Talk about it, Ashley. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm unregulated and I'm approaching a beloved rascal who is having a meltdown or crisis, um, they're going to pick up on my energy level and they're going to feed off of it. Um, something that um, Mr. Desertel says that I love and I hear it all the time, well, I hear it in my brain is, I need to be the best version of myself for you right now. That's a beautiful- And sometimes that means, yeah. so sometimes you just step away, take a breath, but they will feed off of my lack of control. Michelle Lake, unmute please. Give me a thank you, Coach B, Michelle. Thank you, Coach B. Michelle, listen. 
put yourself in the mind frame of an emergency room physician. You're gonna have people coming into your emergency room all the time who have serious problems. Your job is to suture them and help them, not yell at them. You understand what I'm saying? And if an emergency room physician who faces problems way worse than ours can maintain self-control, if a good cop does not scream at a murderer, if a policeman can maintain self-control, problems far worse than ours, Michelle Lake, we can maintain professional face because that's what we're here for. We're here to help the kids who are emotionally crippled. Michelle, talk about the grade that you're gonna give yourself if you start screaming at your patients. Go ahead, Michelle. If I'm screaming at my patients, I would have to give a, a five, a very disappointed, and it's not even the screaming, but it's the sarcasm, it's the, the expectation that kids are gonna understand when I speak to them as adults and they're not adults. Yeah. And they act as such. That's right. So if I'm out of control, they're out of control. That's right. So really we're seeing, Michelle, the problem with beloved rascals is, is that we're the prime rascal in the classroom. We're not acting professionally. And I'll give you some more help in a second. Katrina Beals, unmute. Give me a thank you, Coach B. I'm gonna give you a little more life advice before I go to the next step. Katrina, unmute. There we go, thank you. Katrina, listen, everybody make my gestures. You have some colleagues, Katrina, that don't like kids. And at lunch, they will, say things about kids that they would never say if the parents were around. There are teachers who ought not to be teachers because they hold a grudge against kids who act like kids. Katrina, Katrinka, don't sit with them at lunch, okay? Don't sit okay. with anti-kid teachers at lunch because they're just gonna get you aggravated. Katrinka, am I making sense to you? You are making perfect sense, absolutely. You're thinking, you're thinking about one or two colleagues right now, aren't you, Katrinka, who are just complain, complain, complain. I am. Listen, if you don't want to suit your wounds, get out of the emergency room, okay? This is what we do. All right, here we go. So step two is, Grade yourself. Step three, my friends, make an alpha hawk wall. Look at the alpha hawk walls. Here's a great one. Alpha hawk wall, alpha hawk wall, alpha hawk wall, big alpha hawk wall, alpha hawk wall. Meet our alpha hawks. Raise your hand if you have a big, glorious alpha hawk wall in your classroom. Raise your hand. Good solution, Dawn. Talk about the power of bringing a whole flock of alpha hawks into your classroom every day. Blue girl, go. Thanks coach. Yeah, actually one of those that you just showed was one of mine. I've got mine displayed above our cabinets. Uh, our cubbies where our coats go, they're right above us. Um, so we can refer to them throughout the day. We can stop and say, what kind of that same rating, how would your alpha hawk feel about you right now? Are you working in a way that would make your alpha hawk proud? And you can always refer back to it throughout the day. Um, and not only when things are going kind of not so great, you want to do it when things are going well too, because our alpha hawks love us through the good and the bad, and they're going to praise us and love us um, all the time. So you can refer to it throughout your day. Very, very good. So in the slides, we've given you a letter to send home. Everybody show me how excited they are to have a letter they can send home about the alpha hawk. 
We want kids talking to parents. We want kids talking to guardians. Who did you know who lived for others? That's the legacy of Alpha Hawks that makes the classroom a moral environment that nourishes other directed behavior. Now, here is a very simple way for kids to make their own alpha hawk. They can draw it, they can put a photograph in there, and there's some room for stars, which I'll talk about. Here are some drawings of alpha hawks that kids have on their desk. Nancy, you're a big fan of these. Talk about the alpha hawk desk cards. Go ahead. Uh, well, thanks. I thanks, Coach. I am a huge fan of this because, as Dawn described her big display, when you actually can take a copy of that and put it on a student's desk or in their folder where they can actually lay their hand on that or feel the closeness of it, it's very powerful. And think about your own desk. Do any of you have picture frames of your family nearby on your desk? This is what this is to that student as well. Huge power. Very good. So we're still in the Alpha Hawk wall step. And what we did is that we made some Alpha Hawk cards just for this session. Everybody show me how excited they are by Alpha Hawk cards. Now, let me explain the card. I put in Cesar Chavez and a description of him and a guy by the name of Wells Carruther. I'm gonna talk about Wells Carruther and you make my gestures. When the two airplanes flew into the Twin Towers, hundreds of people were trapped, many of them on floor 75. A young man wearing a red bandana went up to floor 75 and helped people down. And he made three trips and he saved the lives of 18 people before the building collapsed. No one knew who it was, but they said he had a red bandana and his mother realized that was my boy. We have examples of Alpha Hawks coming at us through the news in our family history. These are the people, not superheroes, Let's talk about superheroes. Everybody huddle up. Problem with superheroes is they solve problems violently. That's not the way of the alpha hawk. That's why kids are practicing karate kicks on the playground because they have the wrong notion of what it means to be a good person. A good person is someone who can kick someone else in the mouth. That's our culture. It's not the alpha hawk culture. So what we did with these cards I made two of them and I'll make a few more. But the idea is, is that you put up Cesar Chavez or Wells Carruther or some others that are gonna make. And if the kids like that alpha hawk, make a copy and give it to the child. The child then picks one, two, three, four, or five or diamond rule and puts a little mark on it. I'm gonna make my alpha hawk proud by improving in the diamond rule. End of the day, if they've made the alpha hawk proud and you go along with it and the class agrees, they put a gold star right here on top of this image of a star. And then they get to roll the dice. Yes, I said roll the dice. Everybody huddle up. If you haven't experienced a dice roll in your class, You've missed the magnetic power of uncertain reward. Raise your hand if you've experienced rolling dice in class and you've just been astonished by it. Nancy, put a link in the message box where they can get the dice. And here's how this little alpha card game works. Doc, unmute. 
Doc, a bunch of kids have won some gold stars. You're only rolling the dice once. You roll the dice and then the kids look at their card. Well, if they chose Cesar Chavez, a two or a three gets them a bonus. If they chose Wells Carruthers, a one or a two gets a bonus. If they've made their own Alpha Hawk, a one or a three gets the bonus. Uncertain reward, roll the dice, give another star to your Alpha Hawk. Doc, explain the power of dice rolls and how cool it is to link it to Alpha Hawk stars. We're making a game of being a better human being. What a great game. Go, Doc. Thank you, Coach. All right. I knew you'd find a way to weave in dice rolls with our Alpha Hawks. And with this card, we can see that each roll will um, hopefully produce one of these lucky numbers. Um, if we're looking at this uh, student card here, we see that a one and a three will produce that extra star um, that they will note on their Alpha Hawk card. My dear friend, explain your brilliant idea of putting a heart at the top of the card, the Alpha Hawk heart. How would you want kids to use this? It's not decoration, it's a power button. Go, buddy. Thank you, Coach. Uh, so, you know, Nancy brought up something just a moment ago. You know, if we think about our desk area, uh, we typically have pictures of our family members in frames, right? And it's that that closeness that we feel um, that makes us want to have those frames and those pictures there. And so how can we represent that um, with our cards? We have this heart here, and anytime a student is feeling um, a moment where they need to just feel that extra closeness, the heart there is for their finger to just go and tap almost like a heartbeat, and they can know that their alpha hawk is right there with them. All right, everybody, this is huge. Everybody huddle up. Don't wait for the crisis to put your finger on the alpha hawk heart. Just say, all right, boys and girls, put your finger on the heart. Tell how it feels to feel your Alpha Hawk spirit with you. Tell your neighbor four or five times a day. Bring the Alpha Hawk spirit into the classroom. Bring their legacy into the classroom. Connect kids. Our kids are not just disconnected. Their connections are shredded with family, with friends. They're on the streets. They're lost within themselves. Connect with that power of love many times a day. Now, Kendra, unmute. You and I have had conversations before, Kendra, and I'm gonna tell you what to do when a kid is rolling on the floor. Kendra, tell us how excited you are to discover the relationship between Alpha Hawks and Beloved Rascals. This is step five, it's all there is. Well, thank you, Coach. Um, I am so excited <clears throat> to teach my students um, how to be better human beings. Yes, it's about reading. Yes, it's about math. But ultimately, in the end, what I want them to be is a good human being and using the alpha hawk and all the activities that go with it, it's gonna make it naturally happen um, within the classroom. Holy mackerel, give that woman a 10 finger rolling woo, woo. All right, Kendra, listen, you have an alpha hawk, you have a beloved rascal rolling on the floor. Well, you can't teach students to control their emotions if your emotions are out of control, we said that. Practice calm breathing. Practice this before the child is rolling on the floor and say this to yourself. This one's for you, Mother Teresa. This one's for you, Uncle Marvin. And feel the power of walking in your life guide's footsteps. Here we go. I'm calling on each person here quickly. Unmute. And I just want you to say, 
my alpha hawk is blah, blah, just bring the power of the alpha hawk into this meeting. Sarah, who's your alpha hawk? Sarah DeBoer. My mom is my alpha hawk. Thank you, coach. Very good. Tammy Walker. Thank you, coach. Uh, Mrs. D, my former mentor. Wow. Reen, second grade Utah. Who's your alpha hawk? Who's your life guide? My mother. My mother. When you're facing a beloved rascal, Reen, you say to yourself, this one's for you, mom. Understand what I'm saying? Bring your mom's spirit, yes. her legacy, into that troubled child's life. Peg Pisano, who's your alpha hawk? My grandma. Yeah. So you're going to say, the kids rolling on the floor are going to say, Grandma, this one's for you. That's where your power comes from. All right, we'll finish up. When you can, say to your beloved rascal, you know your alpha hawk loves you. You know your alpha hawk thinks you are a very good person. What advice would your alpha hawk give you right now? And Andre, never say, what would your alpha hawk say about your bad behavior? Do not beat your kid with an alpha hawk. Andre, you have enormous experience in this. Talk about the best things to say when a child is in crisis, linking them to the loving power of their life guide. Go, Doc. Thank you, Coach. Yes, you're making a very good point. You don't want to use the student's alpha hawk against themselves, right? Um, so we wouldn't want to use it in a threatening way, uh, but its power comes from reflection, right? So when a kid is um, showing signs of, you know, behavior is escalating, you can try to catch it early and say, hey, what advice would your alpha hawk give you in this moment? You're right. This math test is so hard and you want to quit, I can see it, but let's think about our alpha hawk. What would your uncle tell you to do with this math test? Um, so that's how we would want to use the alpha hawk in those moments. Very good, 10 finger woo. My friends, we've got to help each other. If all the teachers who are using whole brain teaching were reaching out to help teachers who need whole brain teaching, we would have helped tens of thousands of kids as opposed to just several thousand. Please post your stories on our Super Improver page. Five steps, we'll go over them. And if you have questions, we will answer them after we turn off the recording just to make this short. Step number one, talk about your Alpha Hawk twice a day. Step number two, don't take home your disappointment. Take home the grade that your alpha hawk would give you. Step number three, make an alpha hawk wall. Send home the letter. Step number four, use these alpha hawk cards. Have kids make their own pictures. And step five, Follow our advice about how to talk to beloved rascals. This will solve an enormous number of problems, but you've got to build the culture. I'm turning off the recording. <laughs>